Okay, when we look at the piano and we follow it along, we can see that it has 88 notes which are a combination of white keys and black keys. We'll also see that there's a nameplate. In this instance, the piano is called a Boston. This is a grand piano and has a few extra keys over the standard piano and keyboards. Okay, going to the bottom of the piano, we, also, we already mentioned that the musical alphabet is A, B, C, D, E, F and G. So if we look at these notes, um, I'll try and get the camera angle right, the very bottom note, white key, on the piano is an A. So basically, the white keys follow the musical alphabet, and we just go A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. So once we reach the G, we repeat A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on, right to the top of the piano. So it just keeps going, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So if you ever get lost and can't remember your notes on the piano, just start at the bottom and count up through your musical alphabet. Okay, the black keys are very helpful at the beginning because they help us find our white keys. Uh, they're like geographical um, features. If you like, like mountains or hills and streams and valleys, uh, help us navigate our landscape. And on the piano, the black keys help us. So we're going to look first of all at the groups of two black keys. If we go to the group of two black keys, the white key immediately to the left of the first black key is a C. Okay? Uh, we're going to learn this key first because most of the first tunes we're going to learn begin on this note C. Okay, so two black keys to the left, the note is C. And the good news is, to the left of all the groups of two black keys, the note is C. So C, coming up, two black keys, C. Two black keys, C. Two black keys, C. And so forth. So this is a very useful exercise at the beginning, is to find and be able to find all your uh, notes in any position on the piano. So the C's are always going to be in the same position. Okay. The next note we're going to learn is a note to the left of the three black keys. So this one's an F. So the left of the three black keys. So all the F's again will be in the same position to the left of the three black keys. And we could go through the entire piano, which I advise finding all your F's. And one more. Okay, from these two keys we can find all the rest. <clears throat> but we can also use the geography and the contours of these black keys to find our other notes. So C to the left of the two, learn that one first, F to the left of the three. Now we go the other direction, to the right. So to the right of the two black keys is an E, all your E's will be in the same position, and so forth. And finally, using the black keys, to the right of the three black keys is B. Three black keys to the right, B. So just to recap that, to the left of the two, C, to the left of the three, F, to the right of the two, E, to the right of the three, B. Okay, well we have C and E left and right, what comes between D? And it also comes between the two black keys. So an easy note to find, two black keys in the middle, D. Okay, and that just leaves us G and A. And A, as we said, was the very first note we play on the piano. G is to the right of the middle in the group of three. G is to the left of the middle black key in the group of three. So, using the black keys we can find any white key on the piano. And what I would advise you to do, I'm just going to pan out here a bit. What I would advise you to do is find these keys repeatedly over the entire span of the piano until you're comfortable finding any note A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And just to recap what we were saying earlier, also do it in reverse. If you're going to go up your notes 
For instance, say I decided to find all my A's, then all my B's, then all my C's. Also try it in the reverse, finding your G's, your F's, your E's, D's, C's, B's and A's. So you're practicing, you know, playing your notes going down the piano. Okay. Um, one possible thing can happen is you can confuse the F's and the C's and the E's and the B's. If you think about it, <clears throat> C comes before F in the alphabet, E comes, um, it's like, well, it comes after B, but uh, mm -hmm. C comes before F, so the way I remember this is F is bigger than C, so F gets 3 and C gets 2. Okay, with a bit of practice you'll have no problem remembering the notes. Um, one other thing to say is, as a musician we use three senses. We use the sense of touch, which actually plays the keys. We use the sense of sight, uh, which will read the music eventually. And the most important sense of all, of course, is hearing, which we share with the audience. So the audience doesn't use touch, they're not playing the instrument, and they don't use sight, they're not actually reading music. They're only listening. So they don't really care what note, you know, fingers you play the notes with. They don't care whether you can read music or whether you've learnt it by ear, as long as you play the tune correctly. But for us, we, you know, as time goes on, you want to use that team effectively. And this is why I would advise you, you know, eyes closed, start feeling around the keyboard, get to know where the gaps are between these notes. So feel your group of three, feel the gap in there, feel the gap in there. And you know, find then three black keys to the left is F, to the right is B, feel around again, feel two black keys, there's a gap there, there's a gap there, I've got a finger in the middle. So that's C to the left, E to the right. So with a lot of practice, um, using your sense of touch, you only, eyes closed, you should be able to find any key on the piano. Um, if you play a wrong note eventually, I know this is an introductory video, but this is what you're aiming for as a musician. And it will depend on how much practice you put in and you know how committed you are to becoming good at it. Um, you will correct your notes with your hearing rather than your sight. So if I intended to play that note, and for instance I made this sound instead, I would ask myself, is that a higher sound than my intended sound or is it a lower sound? For instance, if I played that sound instead of this one, I would again ask myself, is it lower or higher? Lower or higher, sorry. And then attempt to uh, correct using my hearing until I match the sound I was looking for. And again, using touch to find my notes so that my eyes can remain on the actual music. It's quite advanced stuff, but I'm introducing it now so that you can be thinking ahead of the importance of having a team Okay, if you think about it, a star player goes out in the pitch, he can be the best player in the world, or she can, but if they're up against three people, they're probably going to get beaten. So the same way in music, if we're effectively using uh, our three musical senses of touch, hearing, and sight, we're probably going to become a better musician um, than someone who's just using the one sense. Whether it's just touch, or whether it's just hearing, or they're using their sight to correct every mistake they make. Okay, so just wanted to touch on that. Okay, the first position we're going to uh, use to learn our songs is the middle C position. So we go back up and you can see the nameplate there. We have a nameplate on you know, practically every piano. And generally middle C will be very close to that nameplate. So we see the group of two black keys and that is middle C. Now, middle C is not in the middle of the piano. Uh, actually, if you look, it has two black keys to the right and it has three black keys to the left. So why is it middle C? Well, on most pianos, not grands, which have an extra C at the very top, there are seven keynotes. And if we count from our bottom C notes, so two, there's our first one. One, two, three, four. And there's the nameplate. It's the fourth C on the piano from the bottom. And 4 is the middle number from 1 to 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 3 C's below it, 3 C's above it on a standard piano. Okay. Even if it's a grand piano, all you have to do is count up uh, 4 C notes from the bottom. So 1, 2, 3, 4 will always bring you to middle C. Okay. Keyboards are different, but generally again, 
that middle C on a keyboard, depending on the amount of keys, will, will more or less be in the centre of the keyboard. It's not going to be off somewhere <laughs> very far to the left or very far to the right. It's going to be centrally placed. Okay, um, our first hand position will be putting, I'm, I'm showing my left hand here because I'm holding the camera on my right, so I'm just going to very quickly switch. We want, remember our hand shape was a, a very loose curve. If I can just show it as if we're holding an imaginary ball. And again, we can use our fist, elbow or knee to get that position. And we likely drop our fingers onto the piano, so we're sitting on those tips. Yeah, we're just sitting on those. And our thumb is on the side. We don't play the notes with the point of our thumb and we don't play with a flat position. I do do that just for illustration purposes. So that's our position. Thumb on C, the left of the two black, and then each finger takes a consecutive key. White key that is. And our numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. And at the beginning that's all we really need to know to get going. Okay, the left hand, when we bring it in, We'll also bring the thumb onto the C, but this time dropping the fingers in the opposite direction. So it'll be one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, let's see if I can get a better camera angle. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so good luck with that. Uh, one last thing I'd like to say to you is actually where the piano got the name. Um, the full name of the piano at the beginning was the 40A piano, which then got switched around to Piano A40. I thought when I was a child it was a very exotic sounding instrument, which is one of the reasons I wanted to learn it. And then I got pretty disappointed when I found out that it just translated as soft and loud. So not great imagination shown there. And the reason they called it the soft and loud instrument, or the loud and soft, is it's because it's touch and pressure sensitive. If I just tip the note, very light pressure, I get a soft sound, and the more pressure and weight I push through the note, the dynamic level, as we call it, gets louder and louder. Okay, so soft and loud, and of course that has been shortened down to just piano, which literally translates as soft. Um, and that's the uh, story behind the name of the piano. Okay. <laughs>